Riders, welcome back to Sam's Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and today we are testing the Orbea Wild 2023. For me, one of the most exciting e-bike releases this year, but I have some questions, and I'm sure you riders do too. And a massive shout out to Orbea and Mammoth for sorting out these bikes, because at the weekend, they had a test event here that was fully booked, but they managed to slot us in on a Monday, which is absolutely amazing. And the legend Carlos, the head mechanic at Mammoth Bialda, is an absolute legend, and he's the only mechanic that I let touch my bikes these days. Definitely recommend that. And also, riders, if you're looking at testing a wild, in the show notes, I'm gonna have all the dates in Spain where you can test an Orbea Wild. The brand new Orbea Wild 2023, and this is the M Team coming in at 9,900 euros. And it's a straight 29er with 170 up front or 160 and 160 in the rear. And it's rocking a Bosch Gen 4 motor in all of the models, apart from the top limited edition, where it is possible to get that Bosch race motor. A 750 watt hour battery comes stock in the M team that I'm testing today. But also, if you wanna lighten the bike a little bit, you can put a 625 watt hour battery. But also riders, note that this battery is not removable without dropping the motor. The Wild is available in four sizes, and I'm 183 centimeters, so I've gone for the large, and that has a reach of 480. We've got a head tube angle of 64 degrees, seat tube angle 77.5, and a nice short chain stay of 448 for a 29er, which I absolutely love. And the first question I have, and I know you riders have too, how much does it weigh? So this is a large with a 750 watt hour battery. This is also the top-ish spec, it's the M team, and this one, is coming in at 23.19 kilos. And I'm gonna say it again, we've got a large bike here. We've got EXO Plus tires, which are set up tubeless, and we also don't have pedals. So that's impressive. And also remember, right, is if you get the 625 watt hour battery, you're gonna drop about a kilo and a kilo and a half off the bike. All right, enough of geeking out over those numbers. Let's put some pedals on this and go and test it. And the first, first downhill of the Bear Wild, we just climbed up about 600 meters of vertical climbing. Before we crack on with that first downhill, a massive shout out to Quadlock. You riders out there might think I'm pretty good at doing POV and just talking off the cuff, but I actually always have notes that you'll probably see right here. So I have it, I do some downhilling and then I stop and I read a bit more of my notes. It is a little bit of cheating, but it is pretty hard to commentate while you're smashing down a downhill on a brand new bike. Anyway, Quadlock's awesome, love the product. They've been sponsoring Sands Bikes for a couple of, about a year now. Absolutely love it, definitely recommend. Okay, riders, we're in La Jarosa, which I reckon is probably the best place to test bikes in Madrid. Crazy trails, really nice trails. A bit dry out here. First off, let's talk about how does the Orbea Wild look? I'm gonna put it out there and say, I reckon it is one of the best looking electric mountain bikes released this year. Absolutely beautiful lines, and I'm riding the M Team, which is 9,900 euros. And let's talk about that build. Whoa! Launch it. It's got 38s. It's got an X2. It's got Shimano XT running gear, Shimano XT brakes. It's got carbon Orbea wheels. Uh, probably my major disappointment with this bike would be the tyres. They're coming with. EXO Plus casing, and so the Minions EXO Plus case tires with the Max Terra compound, which is the harder compound. First thing I'd do is obviously I'd whack some Schwabby tires on there. Well, they just did a reasonably large huck. It definitely has a nice bottomless feeling on that suspension. Definitely good. Okay, the first down here was done. First impressions, good. Um, very fast, very stable. Not super playful in those tighter corners, which you know you can imagine. Uh, definitely the suspension kinematics has that bottomless feeling. I did a reasonably large drop, definitely bottomed it out, but it wasn't a harsh bottom out. Uh, 
I'm gonna say if anyone is quite familiar with the Trek rail, I have tested that bike. This is very reminiscent of this of that bike. Uh, I love the low standover height of this bike. It's amazing, Bayer before jumped on it. And most bikes, she can't stand up, but she could stand up on this, on a large. I also love that you can smash the dropper all the way out of the way, like it goes all the way down to the collar. And I've got some notes here, what am I gonna say about, uh, so we're gonna talk about the 51% stiffer and how it's stiffer. So Orbea have made this bike with a non-removable battery. So you can choose between the 625 and the 750. And uh, there's about a 1.2 kilo weight penalty for the 750. Uh, and the reason why the battery is not removable, because they can make the bike stiffer and more compliant. And I'm gonna agree with that. You know, like most of the time that I've taken out my battery is one, to race the EWS, or two, when I'm flying to Australia or flying somewhere, I never take my battery out. So it's not gonna be perfect for everyone, but I think for me, it's definitely not a deal breaker. And I was speaking to the Orbea guys this morning, and I quizzed them about that, are they gonna be racing the, whatever it's called, the new EWS uh, this year? And they said, yes, they are. They're gonna be racing the wild, and they're going to have two mechanics working on the bikes uh, like within the half an hour break. And they reckon, with two mechanics that know what they're doing, they can drop the battery and put it back together and change the battery within 15 minutes. I kind of thought Obeya would do that because this is the perfect race beast. And this would be my second time on the Bosch Gen 4 motor, but this is the first time with the new smart system. Gonna say, absolutely love the remote. I love the minimalistic display here. And also, you've got five increments here Right, so 20% power levels. But also, when you go down 10%, it changes colors. So you can actually see 10% increments of usage of the battery, which is huge, a massive benefit. And obviously a lot of people will be thinking, is it worth going the limited edition with the race motor? I'm gonna say, if you're racing 100%, I haven't ridden it, but I've done a bit of research on it. And from my understanding, it's a very, very similar motor. It weighs about 150 grams less, and it's got, I think, a lighter case magnesium shell. But I believe the inners are almost the same. It's more firmware, so you get that race uh, mode in the firmware. And also say, if you're not a seasoned mountain biker and quite good at technical climbing, it's probably gonna be pretty dangerous. Like the other day, at the moment, I've been testing the Bafang uh, M510, which is, they say, has a very similar feel to the race motor. And I say I'm a pretty good technical climber, and I've crashed a couple of times riding it because it has got like a 1.5, two meter overrun. And if you get it wrong climbing, the bike just keeps on going and you go with it. Uh, so I'm gonna say, unless you're racing, probably is not worth it. All right, we're going into the second downhill. Definitely noticing those big 29 wheels. It's just harder to slow down. Once it gets going, this bike just goes. Super stable though, just plows things. Definitely lots of room for error. I just rode straight into basically a vertical rock and it just bounced me over it. Yeah. Fast sort of flowy tracks like this, it's definitely in its element. Oh, so fast through there. A man just asked me how I'm finding the suspension and it's still way early days. I'm gonna say it's not even half set up for me, but it, I'd feel, I say it feels kind of linear and it, I, I want to say yeah launch it doesn't feel like it sits you up that much in your travel but also it's not blowing through the travel and if it is blowing through 
it definitely does not have a harsh feeling. So let's talk about all the models. So the Wild is available in seven models. We've got three aluminium and four carbon. I believe it's starting at five and a half thousand euros up to the limited edition with the race motor. And that is 12,000 or 12 and a half thousand. I reckon the one I'd be going for would be the one I'm on now. I mean, ST brakes, great suspension. And don't forget, we also got the Myo, which is full customization by Orbea. Unfortunately, we're heading up now for the last downhill or the second to last downhill. We never say the last downhill because the bikes have to get back to Mammoth before end of day and they're going off to Malaga for this weekend. And riders, remember, check in the show notes about all the test weekends for Orbea in Spain in the coming months. Now, just want to talk a little bit about the motor and how it climbs. The Orbea Wild 2023 is 170 160 suspension so it's an enduro slash super enduro electric mountain bike really designed to go downhill it climbs really well like the bosch motor is fantastic amazing power i'm going to say the most powerful motor in its class so on technical climbing as i said enduro mountain bike so you are pushed off the mountain a little bit with 170 suspension and a reasonably high stack height your weight is off more you bend those elbows, get your head over the handlebars. This climbs absolutely no problem. It's never gonna climb as good as, I don't know, 150, 140 trail bike, something like the Orbea Rise. Just won't climb as good as that. You know, you gotta pick your battles. Are you wanting to technical climb and go down a bit slower on enduro trails? Or are you wanting to do technical climbing a little bit slower and go faster on downhills or on enduro rides? For me, definitely faster on the enduro. Absolute fine climber. All right, so this is the last downhill. This has got to be one of my most favorite downhills in Madrid. A bit dry, you're blown out right now, but the wild is making light work of it. Definitely on those open fast sections, just absolutely loves it. And you know, it's pulling in, now I'm getting used to it. It's definitely pulling in faster on those corners with the 29 at the back. Remember, we've got a 448 chain stay, which is, you know, pretty bloody short for a 29er. Ooh. Keep it upright, Sam, rubber side down. Super stable. You can't see on the Insta360 that the back end just got thrown out and it just pulled it straight back in. So first off, after two hours riding it, definitely not enough for a full review, but my initial thoughts are, it's a super confident, stable, big enduro bike. Definitely feels, you know, capable to take on any of the big chunder. Rides light, very stable through the chatter. A little bit, you know, tighter in those tighter switchbacks, but definitely manageable. So yeah, I'm really impressed. And as I said, you know, this is one day riding, one day riding on this bike. Not even one day, like three hours. It's impossible to give a full review of this bike, but definitely a very capable enduro bike. And trail riding, well, I haven't exactly taken any trail riding today, but I'm gonna say, with the 64 degree head tube angle, it, with this high stack height and the 50 mil stem, it doesn't make it feel that lethargic. Like it doesn't, it, it's still reasonably nimble. Not super nimble, but not bad either. Better than I expected. There's a bit of a fast section in here. Absolutely love this part. See how much it eats it up. Oh, very stable. Yeah. Just noticed then when it started getting pretty rowdy because you do have a reasonably short chain stay. I noticed that 
I had to, like when it really did get nasty, like my body instantly just went back over the back of the bike more you would like how you'd ride a mullet. That's interesting. So definitely I'm not up to speed yet on this bike because I'm finding the, the riding position and it is definitely more over the back like a mullet. I would love another couple of weeks of this. I'd love to get the suspension more tuned. Feels a little bit linear at the moment for me, but as I said, like it's impossible to get this all set up in one day of riding. Uh, I think Orbea have done a sensational job. It's definitely a contender of one of the best electric mountain bikes of 2023. Definitely love it. We're about to hit a rock garden, which I do like to open it up on. Oh, so good, so good. Oh, oh, pick that line. Oh, so good, so stable. Oh, that was good, that was so good through there. Another rock garden to the naked eye. There might not look like there's a line through here, but there is, just gotta find it. Felt pretty smooth through there. Where is he gonna go down? Fully open, just so composed. Okay, it is, you know, feels a bit like bucking Bronco, but you just hold on to the bike and just have confidence. It's just gonna get you through. It's just so stable. All right, riders, that is done. Back to drop the bikes off and then back to the studio for a conclusion. <laughs> and now for the conclusion, only three hours on the Obeah Wild and riders, I want more time. I want to get another, at least a week on this bike or Bayer have done something very special here. It's an absolutely amazing enduro bike, super stable and super confident. It's actually not a bad trail bike either. The 64 degree head tube angle and the high stack and the 50 mil stem didn't make it as sluggish as I thought it would be. And how does it climb being an enduro bike? Well, it's not the best climber in its class, but it's not a bad climber either. And as I always say, you gotta pick your battle. Are you wanting to go fast downhill or fast uphill? And how is the value on the Abeo Wild? Well, the M team that I was riding was coming in at 9,499 euros. Now for me, I don't think it's really expensive or really cheap. I think it is what you expect to pay for a top quality electric mountain bike in 2023. Absolutely great components. I think this probably is the spec that I would go for. Amazing suspension, and you've got obviously the 750 watt hour battery. I think it's overall the package. And absolutely the best thing about the Obeya Wild is the left-handed water bottle holder. This is a first off. I've never ever had this on an e-bike ever. Thank you Obeya for doing it. I think I didn't actually notice. Haman actually said, Sam, do you realize it's got a left-hand water bottle holder? I was like, you're right. So that's the best thing. And the worst thing, I'm sorry to say it, the Maxxis tires. They came with the Max Terra front and back in the EX, EXO Plus casing. Definitely not a fan. And it made it harder to test the bike because I didn't have the confidence in those tires. And I'm sure you riders are thinking, should you get the 750 watt hour battery or the 625? I was thinking the same thing. We had the 750. We went out and did 1300 meters of vertical climbing in about two and a half hours. And I wanna say we had about 25 to 30% left of that battery, which is really, really impressive. I'm also gonna say you could opt for the 625, but I don't think unless you're a seasoned mountain biker, you're really gonna feel the difference in the weight between the 750 and the 625. So if it was me, I probably would go the 750 because almost all my friends are riding with 700s or 750s or 800s. And how was the sizing? I went for a large being 183 centimeters or around six foot and I found the fit perfect. Maybe I'd put a 40 mil stem on and a little bit more of a riser bar and drop the stack height, but that's just my style. And it's not all gravy. No e-bike is perfect. The things I haven't liked about the Obeya Wild. First off, I'm gonna say the integrated headset cable routing is a bit of a pain. I ride moto style or British or Australian braking style. So Carlos, the mechanic, had to change over the brakes. And to do so, he had to take 
the whole headset apart and it did take him about half an hour. He also said that now he knew how to do it because he hadn't done it before. It probably would have only taken him 10 to 15 minutes. No flip chip and no changeable geometry, which means you can't run a mullet. Now it's not a deal breaker for me because I think it's actually really good as a 29er, but it would have been great to have that available for the riders that do like to change and play around with the setup. Now I absolutely love my O customization where Obeya allows you to pick your parts, get a custom paint job, it's absolutely awesome. But I kind of think it's lacking a few products. The new SRAM running gear is amazing. I think they need to add that so you can actually customize your bike with that. And also, why not put some Shorby tires in there as well, you know, for the sponsor, why not? Amazing tires. And I, I really love the Shimano XT brakes. They were good. You can update them, I think for like 250 to the XTR. It'd be really nice to see another option. I'm a fan of the Magura MT7s. So I would like to see just a few more options in the customization in my O. So who is the Wild for? I kind of think the Wild is perfect for a new rider because the bike is super stable and super fast. And also a rider that is looking to go flat out, so a more experienced rider, because this bike is scary fast. It might not be for someone that does want to do a lot of customization because as I said, you can't change the headset cups, you can't run it in a mullet. And also, I love the fact that in a large, Bayer could stand up with her feet down. I love the low standover height. So it's quite a versatile bike. So if you buy it, maybe your wife or your kids could ride it as well. And now to the million dollar question, would I buy the Obeya Wild today with my hard earned cash? I'm gonna say bloody oath, 100% yes. It's a sensational enduro electric mountain bike. Probably one of the best ones that's been released this year and I'd be proud to have it in my stable of bikes. And riders, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this very quick look at the Abea Wild. Fingers crossed, maybe I'll get on it for a deep dive in the next couple of months, that'd be awesome. And riders, remember, if you have any questions on the Wild or any other electric mountain bike, I'd love to help out. And also, if you found this informative or you were entertained from this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button, like the video, comment in this video, it really does help out with those algorithms. And you know it, stay safe out there this weekend and we're gonna see you soon.